Hi YouTube, it's Chaneli here. In this video, I'm gonna be interviewing Tony Isola from A Teachable Moment, which is a blog about teaching and thinking specifically about 403B accounts that teachers set up for their retirement. Now, Tony is a really, really awesome resource because he is a certified financial planner and he's also fiduciary and fee only. All of those fancy terminology, like all that vocabulary, basically just means that he is not going to be working based off of commission, Everything that he kind of tells people, um, his clients and advice that he gives to people is for their best interest financially. So uh, we're going to talk about the word fiduciary in this interview. We're also going to talk specifically about 403Bs. Um, in the month of May, there's a week called Teacher Appreciation Week. And I used to be a teacher. Tony also used to be a teacher. So I just wanted to take this time to dedicate this video to all the teachers out there because teachers are so special. I think teaching is one of the hardest jobs that I've ever had to do. And so I value and appreciate every single teacher um, that goes to work every single day to educate uh, the future generations of our country because it is so important and it is a hard job. So thank you to all the teachers out there and I hope that this video helps to shed some light on an issue that a lot of teachers um, need a little bit more education around and a little bit more awareness of. Um, so that being said, if you have questions or topics that you want to submit to me that I can post here about on my channel, you can call me and leave me a message with your specific question or topic and then I will post a video for you right here on my channel and the number that you can call me at and leave a message is 774-231-8522 so now without taking any more of your time i'm going to jump into talking to tony Tony, welcome back. Um, I definitely want to start by talking about this recent piece in Barron's. There was a piece featured, which I'm also going to link in the description box below. But tell us about the, the main topic of the piece. It was really targeting annuities and talking about how teachers need to beware. Um, so yeah, talk, tell us about that piece. Well, basically, the point of the piece was um, to kind of expose how teachers are taken advantage of mm -hmm. due to the fact that they really don't know too much right. about money. And many companies know that. Mm -hmm. So they're prime targets to sell the right. most expensive products out there, which are annuity products. Yeah. Now, annuity products, like anything else, if, if they're used properly, they, they have a place in a retirement portfolio. But yeah. mostly they're there for income generation. And most teachers, especially younger teachers, and pretty much most teachers, yeah. to be honest, need growth. Right. And it's hard to grow money if your money is... If the if fees are basically destroying your returns, yeah, because yeah, yeah. let's do the math. If you buy an annuity and you're paying three or four percent, right? right, right. As sales charges and all the other expenses, and let's say the market returns seven percent, right, over a long period of time, many people would say that's a fair number. And inflation's three percent, right? Mm -hmm. You're really only making four percent after inflation, and then if three percent is taken out in yeah. fees, you're really making like one percent, right? And you're taking risk. Because these, they, they, it's invested. You know, many of the sub accounts and the annuities are invested in the market. But they so, don't sell it that way. No, right? that's the problem. No. that's part of the problem is that they no. don't sell it that way. They sell it to you as though you're going to pocket that complete profit in that. Yeah, time. and and a lot of times, you know, they'll show numbers and they'll say, oh, you're going to get, you know, a six or seven percent return, you know, when they when when you get right. the income from it. But what they don't tell you is a lot of that money is the return of the money you right. really put in. Right. So you're not. It's not like you're getting this extra six or seven percent. It's the return of money you put in. Yeah. So it's a really easy product to mm -hmm. sell to people if people are kind of scared and don't understand money. Right. And and a lot of times I've seen brochures from many of these companies, and they'll call them, you know, protection products, mm -hmm. and they'll tell the salespeople don't don't mention mm -hmm. the word annuity. Right. Don't even say that word because annuities tend to have a bad right. bad reputation. Right. If you Google uh, annuity, you probably see a lot of blogs and a lot of personal finance uh, media saying, you know, uh, annuities are not for ninety percent of people. Like right. it's just not for most people. Don't need it. And it's not right. the best deal in terms of saving for retirement right. or investing for retirement. Well, here's another deal: why teachers don't need it, right? In New York State, there are teachers are eligible for Social Security. So mm -hmm. that, that's its own annuity, right? right? They also have a pension, which yep. is another type of annuity. So they to, to, to actually make a good financial plan for them, yeah. they need now a, a piece of their money that could grow, right? They have the income kind of component taken care of. Why in the world do they need another, another income component? Right. And now if, let's say, inflation is really bad down the road, all three of their portfolios will really be hurt, right? The hit. pension, social right. security, right. And, and this annuity. Yep. So you need something to offset it. But like I said, they sell it 
the, the way it, it's the distribution model, yeah. right? It's not really the product itself. It's how it's distributed. And the way right. it's distributed is we can make the most commissions off this product. Right. And right. anytime you're doing something like that, it's going to end up badly for, for, for the end user, right, which the is the teacher, customer. right? Like if you're, you know, they're going to just sell in and, and to be honest with you, I, I feel bad for some of these people who work there because many times they tie their benefits mm. to monthly sales quotas and how much annuities they sell. So the, the person that's working there, it's like they kind of have no this. choice right. if they want to get paid or having, right. you know, coverage for, for health emergencies. So it's it's a very degrading yeah. experience for right. all people in Yeah, so everybody in my, involved. In, my, in New York City, it's kind of weird because I used to teach New York City too. Yeah. And they have like a fixed option that you could invest in mm. and it's guaranteed 6 or 7%. And I don't know how they do it and I'm not even going to yeah. get into that. But it was there when I was there and it's there now. So if you're a New York City teacher, I can't understand why and, and anyone wouldn't want to do that. I know. That you know what I'm like, saying? That sounds like a if great deal. If someone gave me that, I would say, I don't know how they do it. I don't know what political yeah. deals went on or yeah. whatever, but it's been there. It's, yeah. a, it's, that's, it's only for like it's, city employees yeah, the, and they the get city like a teachers, guarantee. And, and it's, a very, it's yeah. a very high rate. It's basically kind of what you would get in the yeah. market, which I, I don't know how they do it. And yeah. like I said, but- you know, if you're a New York, New York City teacher, obviously, if you see that, you got to really a take a option. look at that because I don't know what to yep. tell people. If someone, you know, because I've had people come to me with that, and yep. I like, well, just leave that's it. Great. I mean, if that's what you're going to get. Yep. You it's know? so funny. Before we started uh, filming this, I was telling Tony that I went on a trip to Thailand with my niece because she just finished paying off her student loan debt after teaching for two years. And she brought me her retirement paperwork when she signed up and was like, what do I do? And I said, wait, you get a fixed yeah. It is. Nobody could believe it. Seven, seven point five. I think it was seven point seven five or something. I was like, "Girl, you want to take that off?" Like, and and I convinced her to put a big chunk of her money there because that that doesn't happen ever. There's no other field where you get a seven percent. I agree. I don't know how they do it. I don't even, you know, like that's not for me to decide. But (laughs) but but it's it is legit. So so whatever you know. But unfortunately, you know, most the teachers outside of that, they don't they don't have anything anything close to that option, yeah. they would get maybe yeah. 2% or something, right? which is, which is not something if you're terrible. a young, even if you're an older person, it's, yeah, it's you can't have all your money in something that gives you 2%. Absolutely not. That's, that's that, just, that barely competes with bank accounts. No, High yield no, online savings money. accounts today give you money, that. That's right? like putting the money in the bank and leaving it well, there let's think about for it. 30, 40 years. Yeah. And, and now you, maybe you're getting 2%, but when you take it out, you're getting taxed, right? Yep. So now maybe you're getting 1.6% or 1.7% and inflation is 2 or 3%. You're, if you do something like that, you're guaranteed, guaranteed to lose money yeah that yeah. never mind what the stock market does yeah. that that is the worst investment yeah. okay so there's two directions that i want to take us in one i want to rewind back and make sure we go over annuity and the big like differences between that and other types of investments because a lot of teachers don't understand why it might not be a good deal to have that in your 403b and then once we kind of talk about that which we'll go over in a second um mm-hmm. is to go over to comparing 403b space with the 401k space why like why is it that this is happening and so prevalent in 403b space for teachers to have to do Deal with these problems, but you don't really hear about this happening in the 401k space. So we'll kind of go there later. But let's start with like the annuity. So from what I understand, a lot of times when people are being sold an annuity, they're told that this is a great way to not take a risk. Like you're not going to feel risk because you can't lose money. And you're, but you know, at the same time, because you're not going to lose any money by investing, you're also going to have to accept a maximum ceiling return, or like a cap. So let's say the maximum you could get is going to be six percent, um, and then you can never lose money. So for someone who's so afraid of like a stock market crash or like losing money in the stock market. That might sound like a good deal, right? Like, oh, I would never lose money with an annuity and I'll be guaranteed to get monthly payments. This sounds great. So so what's the catch? Like, why is the annuity actually not as good as it sounds? Well, here's the catch. First of all, they make the annuity sound like it's foolproof, right? Mm-hmm. The insurance company is going to invest that money that you put in right. and put it in bonds of different types of vehicles, whatever they do. Yeah. So let's say everything goes south. As bad as they make it seem, like oh, you right, you can't invest in stocks. What happens if they all crash and all this? Well, there's nothing saying that that annuity company, the insurance company, is not at risk. Mm. You're all you're simply doing is transferring the risk from the markets to the insurance company, Mm. right? Because if everything is collapsing, something tells me that insurance company 
is going to have to that. It's too. susceptible. So exactly. if that insurance company mismanages the money or just yeah. has a you're, terrible you're, outcome of their investment, yeah, you you're not guaranteed anything, no. even though they're, they're guaranteeing that yeah. you won't lose money. Right. It's, it's, technically. it's not a CD, right? It's right, not right, backed right. up by the, by, by the FDIC, right? It doesn't have a government thing, but they tend to sell these products as if, you know, the insurance company is as rock solid as, as the federal government, which obviously is not the case because they can't tax people. Okay. So if you do have an annuity out there and you're watching this and you're like, ah, it sounds like your homework is to, first of all, make sure it's with a reputable insurance company. Sure. Right. At least. Uh But then also consider. Well, I would find out like what you're paying and what you're getting. And and like I said, maybe you have an annuity and the benefits are good and it's well worth it. But in most cases, you know, it tends not to be the the case case. and you could always get out of it and exchange it, but there's surrender fees. There's, they're, they're not easily transferable into mutual funds. You can do it, but, but there's, there are roadblocks that are deliberately put in place. Right. So if people do find out, they, they try to, you know, discourage yeah. people. So it's know? like a really bad contract that you have with like a cell phone provider or like a cable company. And it's like, yeah. if you try to break this contract, you're going to have to get, yep. you're going to have to pay all this, all these fees and go through these loopholes. And right. so they, they set it up that way so that you're afraid to end the contract. If you do find out that it's terrible, don't let that deter you. If you find out right. your annuity is really not great, um, obviously do your research. But if you do find out that it's not great and then they try to scare you with like all these fees that you yep. have to like all this stuff that was that's them using their tactics to try to to yeah. prevent you from from getting a better deal out there so and, and here's another thing like sometimes you might say like we've done this with people and yeah. we'll call up right and basically they'll say okay it'll cost you eight thousand dollars to get out of this contract right that's the surrender fees right. but we might look at that whole contract itself and the money you have invested and say you know what you're paying seventy five hundred dollars a year in fees. So yes, it does cost you, but either you're going to pay it now all up front right. or you're going to pay, pay it to them. Right. So what do you want to do? And I always tell people, I say, look, if you had the same knowledge now that, 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 you know, about before, let's say 10 years ago, and you bought this, if you knew what yeah. you knew now, would you have still purchased this? Most of them will say no. Right. So I say, well, maybe that's the answer to your question of right. what you should do. Exactly. Do you, do you see? Yeah. And anytime you buy something, where it costs a lot to get out of, you have to question it, right? Why? Like if you go to very reputable, you know, mutual fund companies like Vanguard or people like that, right. and, you know, if you want to sell your funds or get out there, you get it's out. It's very hard. easy. It, because yeah. They're or to not move ex- your funds too is yes, really easy. I remember I, when I left my teaching job so and easy. I didn't have a, a traditional teaching position with the Department of Education in New York. I was working for a charter school. So I actually got lucky and I had a target date fund through Vanguard. Okay. So I was very lucky. I know that's not like the best, best, but that's pretty no, great in the world. Good. Of, oh, absolutely. Of you're fine. So you're I fine. was, I was pretty good. And then, but then later on when I changed my, my job, they sent me paperwork saying, Hey, you have um, this amount of money in this 403B plan. You have to decide if you want to move it or if you want to leave it there. And so I was like, Oh, I should probably roll it over into my 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 traditional IRA that I had at the time, and so I had to call and figure out like, hey, what's this process? It cost me like fifty bucks. It cost me like fifty True. bucks to move all the money into my traditional IRA and not have that four hundred three B anymore with my right. old job because I don't right. work there anymore. Right. Fifty bucks, so it shouldn't cost you a fortune to get out of a, no. of a deal. And, and to be honest with you, like they promised this income, right? Yeah, you you could. What they don't tell you is if you want that for your future, what would be probably a better thing is to invest the money, like say in a low cost index fund. And then yeah. down the road, if you accumulated a decent sum, you could convert it to an annuity right. through a low cost annuity company. Right. So it's not like, you know, there's ways to do this, but the way they're doing it, basically, it's the most expensive way in the world to own a mutual fund. Yeah, because, because that's what you're doing. You're, you're owning a mutual right. fund and you're getting this insurance that most likely you're never going to use. Yeah. And you're paying, you know, four or five times, you know, what you should be paying. Yeah. So it's kind of a mess. And and the reason that people aren't doing much about it is because people really don't know about it. Right, right. Like even most people in this industry, like I'll talk to people that are very experienced people. Like for instance, we did the Barron's uh, yeah, thing yeah. and the reporter, um, Leslie Norton, who came with us, she came and spent a day with us in a nice. school, right? So That's she got awesome. to talk to people. And she's a very, very experienced, you know, senior reporter for Barron's with over 25 years experience. And 
she was like, what is this? Wow. Like, what, what is this stuff? Like, yeah. I can't believe it's this. Not like I, I can't. Were, so it's not like if you're a teacher and you're like, oh, I'm so stupid. I did this. Right. It's no. Totally not true. Because of course not. people don't, you know. Nobody like, knows people, about this. Yes. It's like. Otherwise like, it wouldn't be happening because some you, investigative right. journalist would have put this well, out. Well, you know? hopefully that's kind of what we're yeah. trying to do is yeah. get people to notice this and, and make some changes. But again, you know, the insurance companies and, and they have many lobbyists and both to the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, right. it's in their interest to mm. keep this system in place, in place. because they, they they have very high profit margins on this. When they, you know, in the 401k, maybe they could charge people 1%, but in this, they can charge 3 or 4 Okay, so that's a perfect segue. So let's talk about that because I have a 401k, yes. right? And I also had um, 403b before. And I thought it was the same thing. It's right. just that one is a public sector job and the other one is a private company. So tell me, like, wh- why is it that this is happening? Well, this, people are getting away with it for 3B space, but not 401k. He, here's the deal. If you work, say, for a university or yeah. a hospital, most likely you have a 403B that's covered by many of the same rules of a 401k. It's Got called it. the RISA rules. And that means that the employer, people who hired you, have a responsibility to make sure that those are decent choices. For now, you. did the did the company opt in to the ERISA rules, or is it the sector? Like no, it's a, or- it's the it's it's basically like a lot of times if you get a match, say, yeah, you you are obligated now to, to require these different rules. Okay. Whereas if like most teachers, they're not getting any matches yeah, at all. Yeah, so yeah. now what they're called are non ERISA plans. So the only real job of the employer is more of a cashiering role. Which means, like, they make sure the paycheck contributions go out and the tax reporting gets done. Right. And they have no legal responsibility over mm. the so investment it's just the options. They just do the bookkeeping. Basically. Gotcha. I mean, in English, that's what it is. So, and here's another terrible thing about it. When you have a 401k, like, your employer could go put the plan out for bidding, right? So you could mm. find, all right, let's find the best options at the best price and we'll right. hire the provider that does that. Which is how you shop Which when you shop how, for any, anything. Any normal human Literally, shops, you right? read reviews, you compare I, companies, yeah, you compare products. Right, but okay. in teachers, it's all individual contracts. So every mm. teacher could have like a different option. So there's no scale, right? It's like Walmart, for instance. Walmart, one of the reasons they are profitable is they could go to a supplier and say, look, we're going to purchase a lot of stuff from you. So here's the price we're going to pay. Gotcha. And usually they will, you know, that's the price they'll get because the, they want to keep their business because it's huge. So instead of having all the teachers like banding together to get a competitive price, they're all separate contracts. So if you're all separate, you have no negotiating power, right? right? It's like if the teachers didn't have a union. If they didn't have a union, their their contracts would probably be a lot different, I would right. think. Right. Absolutely. Because if if every person went in individually and said, I want this, I want right, that, right, right. they'd say, Too bad. We're giving you you know, but if yeah. you all stick together, like the union, you know, helps them with that it's the same thing, but in, in, in their four oh three B plan, it's just the opposite. They're all left a- alone. Right. So and it's so bad that in like we we see options in these four oh three Bs that if it was in like say your four oh one K, yeah, you, you could sue. And win, right? Not because just sue. Not you would win. You would. You would say, you know what? I'm paying three percent when I should be paying, you know, yeah. half of one percent. Yeah. And and why would the employer put that option in there? It's so terrible. Right. But they can't even. There's really nothing that could be done legally because the way the system is set up, the employer or the school district has no responsibility. And again, you can't expect them to know about manage. You know, they're a school. They're not. Exactly. They're not an investment exactly. firm. So I'm not saying it's their fault. But there has to be better rules in place where these these items can't get on this list right. where they shouldn't be on the list to begin with is, right. what, I, is what I'm trying to say. They're inappropriate. Right. So to, to, so for a school, right, if there's like, let's say 20 teachers in that building yes. and they have their first you know week, they're all signing up, yes. the HR meeting, yeah, and they yeah. have their paperwork. Right. How do, as a teacher, HR can't really help you fill out those forms. No, you know, no. they just tell well, you, is... you, it's due Friday, fill it out. Because mm-hmm. I remember that, right, when I right. was a teacher. Um, and you don't know where to go or who yeah, to no, ask, no. right? Like in the article, it says that all the teachers would used to go to yeah. you when you yeah, were a teacher and ask you. Because they knew, they knew that, I, that you had I a background, right? Idea, so, yeah. so how do you... Um, recommend like teachers deal with this if you just get your paper you have no idea how your folder be well, set up what can you do it's it's hard to be honest because many of these people that come from these firms they misrepresent themselves and they basically go to the teachers and they say you know we were sent by the district oh, to speak boy, to you so the teachers are like oh it must I be like my pension you. you know you. it's right. kind of like and they kind of they don't do anything 
to dissuade them of those thoughts. And, and, and in the worst cases, they literally lie to them and say, you know, hey, we're part of, you know, the school that, you know, so the teachers just think and everyone, basically everyone else is kind of doing the same thing. That's yeah. why we're in the mess. And then it's the cycle. Like there's the, the wheel just continues to spin yeah. round and round because there's nobody there to say, wait a minute, what am I even right. investing in here? Right. Like in the article, one of the teachers and when the reporter was there, um, you know, she sat down with us and I asked her, I said, do you, do you have any idea like what you're invested in? No. Do you have any idea that you're in an annuity? No. Do you know what an annuity is? No. So imagine oh. that's your, that's your retirement yeah. plan and people are putting, some of them are putting decent amounts of and, paycheck and contributions you're working, in. So teacher, I mean, I was yeah, a teacher, they, Tony, you were a teacher. It's, it's hard some work. of the it's hardest draining. work. It's, it's you work tough. so hard. It's a you're tough not job. paid as well as you deserve to be paid for your right. hard work. And on top of that, yes. the money that you're allocating for your retirement when you deserve to right. take a, a break after all and, that, those decades of work is terribly and, and like here's invested. the deal. It's really bad now for young teachers, right? Because the way the pensions are set up, they're back end loaded, which means you kind of have to work like 30 years oh. to really get the real benefits of what you're putting in. And let's be honest, someone like your age now, I doubt any, people now that are 25 or 30, I can't people see change them careers so working much more. in jobs for 30 years. So And these things aren't portable, so you can't like bring it with you. So oh. a lot of teachers end up not really receiving the, the real benefit, benefits the of the pension the and they, they get kind of screwed in the most important period of their life when they're young, right? Because when you're young, this that's that's when the compounding game. could come and they miss out because many times, you know, they'll they'll say to them, you know, they'll they'll they're not good advisors because a good advisor needs to tell you the truth, right? right? It's like let's say you're a parent and the kids say, I want to have, you know, Coca-Cola and jelly beans for dinner. Now <laughs> They might want to have that, but you have to say that's not a good dinner, right? right. You can't. Have, you have to have vegetables. You have to have protein. This is not the way to eat. That could be a snack at some. But point. it's super cheap for me. But I it's, just pay. It's easy, three right? Bucks. You don't have to argue with them right. and stuff. Just so, let them do it. So the same thing. They'll go to these advisors and and they'll say, you know what? I'm really scared of the market. And instead of explaining to them, right. like the Long market is your friend thinking, now. Right. If the market goes down now, you're actually you're, you're going to win big time, right? Because right. you can buy more shares lower. They'll say, okay. We'll just put you in this fixed account mm -hmm. and you'll earn, you know, two or three percent and, and you barely and you probably more than match and inflation you. and you won't compound. So, you know, they'll they'll do stuff like that. They'll, you know, because they just want to make a sale. Once they sign on and, the dotted and, line, and they, they get, get their, their commission, commission and right. then they could move on. So there, there's there's so many strikes against like a teacher that especially a new teacher coming right. in right. where it's almost a miracle if they do the right thing. Right. It, to me, to me, that's shocking when I see someone that actually has a, a has decent, it set up the right way. Right. Because yeah. the odds are stacked that you're going to be roped into something. Okay. You, you see. So two things that I'm getting out of this. One is if you have uh, if you're brand new and you ha and you know that you're you have a bad plan in a 43B, you do have the option to just not use your 403B. I know so, like a lot of younger to younger teachers, because I did teach for America. So a lot of teachers are either in a charter school or in a traditional public school. And a lot of younger folks who don't or who know that they're not gonna retire as a teacher, you don't have to opt into the 403B. Like, like that's just the first thing. If you rather put six thousand dollars a year in a Roth IRA, absolutely. bam, do that. That's five hundred bucks a month, two hundred and fifty bucks from every paycheck. You could probably manage that on a fifty K, forty K salary. Like that's probably more manageable and better for you in the long run than trying to figure out your 403B. Like that's the first thing. Second thing is if you are interested in figuring out your 403B, like, and you have like specific questions about your case, like I, again, I get so many questions from teachers, from young people. And I know like I used to be a teacher. So that makes teachers feel comfortable asking me and emailing me. But you guys, I'm not a professional when it comes to these things. So Tony, can you tell people like if you have a specific question about your case or if you want to talk to someone to look at your situation and figure out if it's good or bad, like what could they do? Could they talk to you guys? Could they reach yeah. out and how? Yeah, I mean. Basically, I have a blog mm -hmm. called The Teachable Moment, and it's TonyIsola.com. Yep. And if you want to ask a question, you could simply make an inquiry because I write a lot of things about this subject, and there's a lot of posts, and awesome. you could subscribe to it. It's free. All right, I'm going to put that it, in the description box. Uh, so and you'll get, the, you'll get it, you know, an email whenever yep. a blog comes out. You can cancel it whenever time you want. Yep. But if you really do have a question, I would That's gladly answer cool. it. Right. And, and then you could also use that information, hopefully, to tell – your, your colleagues and yeah. friends, because that's what happens now is like many times, like one person, so to speak, does something and everyone thinks that person 
knows what they're doing right. and everybody follows them. And yep. when you find out why they use somebody, right, they'll be like, well, he seemed like a nice guy. So everyone yep. will be like, yeah, he's a nice, that, that yeah. salesperson's a nice guy. My told me he was a good guy. Yeah. Right. So, so, yeah, I mean, you could always ask a question. Okay, and, and, and again, like you said, you know, if you really have some terrible options, there's nothing wrong, especially when you're young and you nothing. don't really need, you're not making that much money. So you don't need the tax write off as much to do a Roth IRA somewhere else. And, and you know, that's a way better bet than putting yeah. yourself in a, in a costly annuity that's going to also take, when you want to get out of it, you know, yeah. you're going to have to pay money. So yeah. you want to make sure, especially when you're young, that every single cent is going to compound right yep. over the next 30 or 40 years and you don't want to pay surrender fees and you don't want to pay high fees when you own the product so that's a terrific thing there's there, there's always alternatives yep. right you could always yeah. do that and i think that's a big thing too because a lot of teachers if you don't feel informed about this stuff you don't feel educated you don't feel like you are confident around investing then you just sign up for right. your plan at work because it's like easy it's the default right. you know they're going to handle it but that's not always what's best for you and um to go back to like when i introduced tony and how we did a previous video we talked in the other video a lot about fiduciary and it is really important to understand whether the services that you're getting from the financial sector are fiduciary or not and it sounds like a lot of these yeah. companies doing these annuities to, for teachers yeah. are not fiduciary yeah. they don't have to do what's in your best interest so that word is so so critical so important for you to know and ask before you sign up with a company or before you take a deal or before you put your money anywhere is is this fiduciary is there an obligation to do what's best for me as a client and what's in my best interest financially down the line rather than what's best for you and your pocket and your commission so we have to be asking these questions right like constantly um Awesome. Well, thank you, Tony. Is there any last, like, you know, uh, key points that you want to leave teachers with if they're watching this and they're like, oh my goodness, mind blown, like any last tips or, or, or things that you really want them to walk away with? Well, I, I think the most important thing is like always ask questions. And, mm -hmm. and the most important question is when someone's coming to you with these products, ask them how they're going to get paid. What, what commission are you collecting? And what will be my charges during the course of the year? And if they say nothing, then you just run away as mm. fast as you can. Because unfortunately, that's what many of them do. Yeah. We, we go to teachers and, and they'll tell us. They'll say, they said I wasn't panning. Or it's just, you know, the $30 a year administrative right. fee that they see in their thing. They say, oh, that's what they're paying. So so that's the key. If you, if you can find out what you're paying, and like I said, anything above, you know, 1%, you, you could probably do way better than that. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. that would you be, could do 10 it doesn't times sound like a lot. It doesn't you could do sound 10 like times, but you can save you, you, 10 times more. You, you really in, could. In but but I'm just saying like, you know, that you could use that just as your benchmark because yeah. people, a lot of teachers don't understand. It sounds, oh, it's only two or 3%. Right. They don't right. understand that that's probably 80% of right. your profits that yep. you're going to be making. Yep. After and inflation. compounded over time, oh times 20, 30 even, years, 40 Even an extra 1% over time is, is an enormous difference. amount of money. So yeah. that would be my, my tip that everyone could do. And like I said, if you get an unclear answer, then don't do any, don't, 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 don't sign up for anything. Cause that should be a question that right. again, if, if, if low cost investing is a selling point, they would say it. Right. So obviously it's not. And, and again, the most important thing about investing, most people, like, let's say you buy a car, yeah. right? And you might spend $60,000 for a BMW. And it's probably better than the $15,000 Hyundai. Even though Hyundai is fine or whatever, but, you know, you could probably make an argument that maybe it's not that much better, but it's certainly a better, you know, the the, the parts and, the, and how it was uh, built. Yeah. You know, it's probably a better car, right? But in investing, it's kind of the opposite. Mm. The lower costs you pay are, are the better product. But yeah. many people think, oh, you know, of course, the, the, you know, in this fancy restaurant, that lobster dinner, I'm paying a lot more because it's yeah. a lot better than McDonald's. Yes, that's true. But it's in investing. It's not the case. It's not right. the case. It's actually the opposite case. The, the, the more you pay for something, the less valuable the product is in yeah. investing. So yeah. keep that in mind. And it's not easy, right? Because in everything else in life, Usually, if you pay more for, for different things, you tend to get a higher quality product. Yeah. Maybe not as much as you're thinking because there's always a markup, but it, usually, you know, you can make an argument paying more for something, you know, should have more features right. where these products right. actually have less features. Have less. Right. And benefits. And for you.
Yeah. For the company, yeah, they're of great. Of course, they're great. <laughs> they're yeah. All right. Well, teachers out there um, or anybody out here watching, uh, if you know uh, a yeah. teacher, if you have had a teacher that impacted you, if you are a teacher yourself, like yeah. this is such an important video to share. This is content that teachers need to be hearing and, and learning more about and just being aware of. Yeah. Share this video with teachers. This is so important. And again, teachers, if you have questions, I mean, sure, you can put them in the comment section below. You can reach out to me, yeah. but definitely take your questions to Tony. Go yeah. to a teachable moment, the blog link is in the description box this is definitely the person to ask um and and again yeah, and we could even come in you know if you wanted us we do we do many presentations that's in awesome. schools for both the teachers and we yep. do you know financial literacy stuff that's so great. this is something you think you'd be interested in yeah, you know contact out. us that's and we awesome. we could certainly like you, you know you did one yeah, with us yeah, right? yeah. i do pretty, these it was and, and uh, when i do them i do focus on students understanding like my story and they and like what they need to know but if you're focusing on teachers and what they need to know that is awesome so definitely take advantage of that if you're interested yeah. or you think your school or your, your teachers on your team might be interested that is definitely something yep. to take advantage We're happy of to help. yeah thank you tony and thanks everybody for watching till next time peace